the People's Democratic Party presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar is in Washington, D.C., in the United States. His trip to the capital of the U.S. is part of his campaign itinerary where he is expected to meet with Nigerians in that country ahead of the 2023 general elections. Atiku arrived in the U.S. alongside the Director General of the PDP presidential campaign and Sokoto State Governor Minu Tambuwa and former Imo State Governor Emeka Ihedio, among others. Now, as the presidential candidate of the PDP was uh, on his way to the United States, a very strong uh, voice and chieftain of the PDP, Ulisa Metu, a former national publicity secretary of the party, resigned and dumped the party. He explained that he would contribute more to Nigeria's governance by being non-partisan. Tonight, let's speak with Mr. Metu who joins us live in our studio here in Abuja. Thank you so much, uh, Chief Olisa Metu, for joining us today. Thank you, Shane. It was surprising for a lot of people to think that you would dump the PDP. Perhaps more surprising that you are doing it now. Again, more troubling from some of your friends in the PDP that you have been giving, saddled with a responsibility which you now dump also alongside your membership card of the PDP. Why? Well, first, uh, Shane, I'd like to mention something that is important to me. Uh, on Thursday last week, I came back to the, to the country after almost one month away. And I called a meeting of uh, a lot of people, my mentees and a lot of other people, to discuss uh, about a young man, Ario Dari Atoyo, who was ill and uh, wanted to discuss how we could help him. We set up a committee, tried to raise funds, who contributed, a lot of young people contributed their hard-earned funds. And we met other people. We arranged an air ambulance, but unfortunately yesterday, I saw him gasping for his life and he died. So I believe, I just want to so, mention so, so very sad about because him. Very Ariel sad. was, a few days ago, was on this program. You know, he was coughing and I never knew that he was that ill. I employed him to come on the program because he's been speaking about that matter. It's so sad, and we just want to One of that. our brightest, and uh, Absolutely. Uh, one of our brightest, and he did a lot in terms of deepening democracy. Now, secondly, um, Shewin, I don't think we're here to talk about the PDP. We're here to talk about issue, why, I mean, what I'm doing right now, the next phase, the next steps. Well, but, but like we need I to said, talk about why you left the PDP. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming You there. rose to I, one I'm of the highest positions in the party. I'm why did there. you leave it? I'm coming there. You know... I believe that the time, I mean, right now, it's not about what I want. It's not about what I desire. It's not about ambition. It's not about what I can get. It's about what can I contribute to the nation? What can I bring to the table? Uh, and I believe that this country will be better served if I, if I participate in a non-partisan role in bringing up issues that can deepen democracy and help in sustaining in sustainers of good governance. I, I believe I have a lot to bring to the table in terms of promoting accountability and uh, transparency, in terms of bringing things that will help with the peace of this country. I, 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 I happen to have been a, a spokesperson for a ruling party and a spokesperson for, for a, 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 an opposition party at a very critical stage. And uh, I, I have a lot. And besides, I, I joined politics for the good of the people. I didn't join politics to get position. I didn't get, join politics to, to talk about what I'll get after election or where I'll be. I joined politics to help promote good governance, to help deepen the, the, the tenets uh, of, the, of the party. And I worked with leaders who, who, who were engaged in the ideals of the party then. So I believe that right now I'm more focused in a, a, a handling things and uh, arranging things that will help deepen. Okay, let me break it down for to you. After the loss of the election in 2015, Shivan, there were a lot of things that I participated in, that I was doing. There were a lot of statements, there were a lot of issues that I brought to the front burner. Front burner. But then it was dismissed by, uh, 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 by the people that mattered, by the government of the day, as being a partisan position. If I had been non-partisan and I brought up these issues, I think this country would have been better served. This country would have been much better. Lots so of that's, the, that's a lot what you're planning mistakes, to do, right? A lot of the mistakes maybe could have 
have been done. So it's, it's a question of bringing up. What about separation of powers? Where are we in this country when you talk about the executive and the legislature in states? What about issues of uh, the, the ministers? What about the issues of people who are handling corporations? What about the ordinary man? Okay, what about the corporations, the institutions that we have that are different from government, what they are doing, how they are affecting the consumer rights in this country? So I want to participate as a citizen, All right. as so, someone who is not a, a partisan So the reason in why in good governance in this country. Yeah, the reason why this uh, question is perhaps coming, one we wonder, after your party lost the election in 2015, you began to answer questions to the EFCC as to some of the funds that were put into your hands into uh, in, in, when you were in office. I mean, you, you had said that you suffered for your party, and one will wonder that you left all, those, all of those suffering, which you opted now, I guess you are still answering questions. And so you left all of that, and you dumped the party. Perhaps there is a reason. Are you going to the Labour Party or to the APC? Or that is well, all... Well, well Shewin, let me say something straight. First, I... I was never given any money for the party or for the party promotion or for the campaign. That was mere media, 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 media trial. That was serious. I mean, by the time the 400 million that we're talking about happened before the campaign, and it had to do with serving national interest, and it, it happened in the presence of everybody. I mean, the government officials and everybody. That was what participated in it. But that's different from the court. You ask me why? Why now? Why am I doing it now? And I tell you. Okay, supposing February next year, PDP wins the election, can I leave? A lot of people who have led into battle, a lot of people who are following me, what will they do? They want me to be there to help in making sure that they get positions. If PDP loses the election, can I leave? I can leave again. I cannot abandon a ship that maybe by then, I mean, already down and out. I won't do that to the party. So if I believe that I want to be non-partisan, if I believe truly they want to play a role. This is the best time. Don't you there think is no that you time than now. Don't you think no you've, better time. you disappointed some of your friends, like uh, the chairman of uh, of your campaign, the director general of the campaign. I mean, who, one of those who have said you should handle mobilization campaign in your region. Is that not a disappointment? How let's, did you let's not, I had a discussion with their leaders, my friends, my associates, and uh, I explained everything to them, and I believe they understand. Truly. Anybody that loved me, anybody that liked me. So this is not about me. what is happening in your party. No, president. no, no, definitely not. No, 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 no. There is no. So what, what do you make of what is happening that. in the PDP? Do you think that well, the candidate of the PDP is handling the rift between himself and the River State Governor? Now we're seeing a bigger one coming between himself and the Governor of Benue State. I'll tell you the truth, Shagun. I am a bit. I'm, I'm actually more worried about what is happening. In terms of uh, issue campaign, it's been abandoned. And people are talking about individuals, are talking about hurts, insults, and uh, abuses like that. These different differences and divisions in the polity. What I would prefer is a situation where the politicians, those politicians that are out there, my appeal to them is that they should focus on issues. My appeal to them is that they should talk about things that will broaden and enhance good governance in this country and deepen democracy as well. Mm -hmm. That's what I, I want to ask them. All right, so you don't have a view on what is happening in the PDP? As a non-partisan person. Now you are non non-partisan. Completely non-partisan. So what do you think? How about, do you think about it could be best handled? About democracy. No, about what is happening in the PDP. In PDP. The article, week, autumn factor. Now you have almost five governors in the PDP saying they won't join article presidential campaign. Would that be injurious? Would the PDP suffer another loss after 2015 and 2019? You spoke in two languages. I think I think that the leadership of the of the PDP being a political party, they should know what to do. I mean, do they know what to do? Them? I don't know. I'm not interested do you think in things are fair party? in the party. I'm not interested in the affairs of any political party. I'm completely non-aligned. When I come here, Sheun, I like to discuss the issue of deepening democracy. Do you think, Sheun, let me ask you, do you think the way democracy is being practiced in Nigeria is the best? Do you think the political actors are doing what is in the best interest of the people? Do you think the people that are in government are doing good governance? Do you think uh, we're promoting transparency, what do you think accountability? Is the what, do you think? What, what do you think, think we're doing? I, I think there should be a, a reorientation 
of their political activities and political affairs. Don't you think country. that is I think so. Just and I, I will participate. Mm -hmm. I will offer myself. I will make pronouncements. I will get involved deeply before the election, deeply after the election. So there is a plan? In doing things, yes, in promoting good governance what is that in this plan? country. What I are will you going get into? involved. Shane, very soon you hear, but deeply I will get involved. Right. I am not abandoning politics. Yeah. I'm just leaving party. The last time I interviewed you, the grace have not been this much. But the grace, so it means something. <laughs> that the older you become, sometimes you become more circumspect. I guess perhaps one of the reasons why you're taking this position. But let me ask you uh, the election of 2023 will be very critical. Yeah. But what do you see if you look at a crystal ball? Um, how do you think that the Nigerian people will vote this time around? Shun, thank you very much. I, I think that in the history of our country in democracy, besides the issue of when we had the Awolo Wars and the Anambi Azikiwe, never in our history have we had the caliber of the people that we have and the issues that are in the front burner. We have a lot of candidates. About six or seven of them are very good. And the, the, this is good for our democracy. This is good for the development of, of the democracy. And if we look at their affairs and what they're preaching, and their manifesto and what they're telling that they'll do, any of them that gets elected they, they, they would believe that if they form a national government, then they will do well for this country. The time for divisions, the time for differences has gone. This is a time to build. This is a time for peace. This is a time for unity. This is a time for good governance. That's what we we'll need to promote. So, um, there on that seat, Chief Dele Momodo, I mean, who is an active uh, player in the campaign of the PDP, it said, in the, in the history of uh, Nigeria's politics, wherever or whenever two, so, two strong Southern candidates are on the ballot, there is always a hurt to the region that the Northern candidate always take the day. Do you see this happening? I didn't watch him, but Dele is a... Dele, I believe, is a... Spoke, no, not spokesman, he's a... He's he's a, a director of strategic communication. Of strategic strategic communication. communication of a political party. So, I mean, that's his own comment. And Do you I see the election that. going into the south? I mean, the presidency going to the south this time around? I believe that we'll have a peaceful election. And Nigerians should come out and vote for whoever they want. And whoever they want, we should hold that person accountable. We should hold him accountable to promote good governance and at least try to be responsive to the needs of the people. We have great needs. Look at what we're talking about security. Look at what the Americans are talking about today. I mean, we need a government that will work. For instance, we, we, definitely we have representative democracy. That's what we're practicing. It's not direct democracy. So let the representatives of the people, both those that are elected and those that are appointed, let them be more responsive to the needs of the people. And that's what I want to get involved with. Not the party that wins, not the person that wins, but the... the, 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 the the, the tenets that we're practicing, the principles that we have. Mm. To... Because one of the issues here, and one thing that I'm also very much concerned about, is the alignment of the political class to the will of the people or to the needs of the average person. Because it does look that, so much that politicians are so much aloof of what the real needs of the people are. Do you see some kind of challenge on the real political structures, in the traditional political structures in this country ahead of 2023? Shun, I think it doesn't have to do with the politicians alone. It has to do with the entire nation. And I say this because there is a need for a reorientation of values, a reorientation of affairs of this country. Do you think in the banking sector, do you think that they're responsive to the needs of us? Do you think that they're affecting us the way they charge us, the way every month, every hour your money goes out? Do you think when you deal with other corporations, do you think the local government, that, I mean, they handle the affairs very well? Do you think that people, the contractors, they actually do the work that they're giving? I mean, it, it, do you think the civil servants, the public servants... So it's a breakdown do of societal values. We have to, we have to do come Do you up. think that if you have a strong leader, that might change? That would change, but that would depend as well on the system that we put in place. So when I, when I was in PDP, yeah. I, I remember some of the candidates that would come to my house, and I tell them that my aspiration, my desire was to be the DG of National Orientation Agency, and they all laugh at me. Because they thought I'll say MPA, NMA, and whatever. 
But be, why do I say this? All you need in this world to have joy, like my old, like my late father used to say, is Jesus first, others second, yourself last. When you think about God, and then you think about the society, your neighbors, and the common good of the people, uh, secondly, and then you consider yourself last, you have joy. So I think I have joy in my life, and I think I have peace in my life. Now, so uh, a lot of people, uh, and I also join them in thinking that this 2023 election, more than ever before, interestingly, this is going to be the seventh election cycle since 1999. And uh, seven means if, I mean, if you are a man, uh, I mean, I'm a Christian, and my faith, there is a time of the f number seven to there's an essence of and what that number seven means. And I don't want to go into the theology of seven right now because that's not the business of today. But the question is that a lot of people believe that this election is going to be crucial to the development and to the future of this nation. What do you think that the young people could do? Or what role do you think they can play in this election? Yeah, I think the first thing they should do is to hold the presidential candidates uh, uh, let them be responsible. Let them first come up with what they want to do, and they should hold them responsible for their actions and their acts. I, I do remember that when I was in active politics, when we tried to tell the, the, the our president when we got into a position, these are your promises, and this is the ones that you can keep, these are the ones that you can keep. And he said he never made such promises, that his party made the promise, that he didn't make it. I remember then. I was active in politics. So let the political actors, let the presidential candidates themselves come and face the young people. Let them tell them what they want to do. Not their spokesperson, not their representatives, but we want to hear from the, from the political actors so that when they get elected, Nigerians will hold them responsible for those promises that they've made and for the positions they've taken and for the statements they've issued. Let them get more. Let the young people hold them why it's, uh, uh, if Nigeria uh, gets it wrong this time around, what are your biggest fears? We won't get it wrong. We have very good candidates. We have very good candidates from the... I can name them. There are about seven of them that are very good. We have very good candidates. I had a very good discussion with Kwan um, so this afternoon where he was talking about his own ideas. We have very good candidates. Show sure, raise. We have very, very good candidates. Please, mm. we won't get it wrong. We have uh, Tinubu. We have Atiku. Uh, we have Pitu. We have, we, have, we have very good candidates. Chief Olisametu, a former spokesperson of the PDP, now that uh, you are out of partisan politics, I wish you the very best in your future endeavors. Thank you so much indeed. Thank you very much. Well.